You know what? Excellence is what you want. And excellence is what you get. How are you living? What are you giving? If excellence is what you see, then excellence. Hello, beloved. Hello, hello, hello. Dr. Catherine E. James here bringing you For the Love of It, a weekly television show designed with the purpose of adding more love in the world, one episode at a time. Thank you, thank you, thank you for sharing your time, your precious time with us. Time is the one thing that we don't get more of. It's one of the things in life we don't get more of. And so I don't take it as a light thing to for you to um, share your time with us. And um, I absolutely, absolutely love engagement. So I invite you right from the very beginning to call in to the station. At any point in time, the numbers are right below on your screen. So any of those numbers you can call in, I invite you to call in. And my hair is bothering me, so excuse me while I fix it on the air. So there we go, there we go. That's better, that's better. So for the love of it, for the love of it, will take on many forms, beloved. Just know um, what, we never know what Papa has in store for us. So it will take on many forms. Everything, however, will be anchored in Luke 10, 27. Will be anchored in love the Lord your God with all thy heart, with all of your strength, with all of your soul, and your mind. And then one more part your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Everything, everything that we do will be anchored in that. In church, we used to say um, a statement like, I don't know what you came to do. <laughs> I don't know, beloved, what you come to do. However, um, I've come, I have been birthed to champion that last part of Luke 10, 27. I've been birthed to champion that last part to help us to really walk out and live out this notion of as ourselves, loving others as we love ourselves. We can't give what we don't have. And so if you're not loving yourself well, you don't have a whole bunch of love in which to love on others. So again, let's be active. Let's be involved. Remember, action is the antidote to despair. I invite you to call in at any time with a question or a comment. So I've, a couple of people have come up to me during the week and say, I don't know what to ask. Well, call in and make a comment then. Um, so it is my life's intent that every soul knows love and know that they are loved. That's my life intent, that every soul knows love and knows that they are loved. To that end, every conversation we facilitate, all the tools and strategies we share, the guests we have on the show and the actions we invite you to take are all intended to lead you and I to live the assumption of Luke 10, 27 the assumption that we're going to love ourselves. And from that place, we're going to serve our brothers and sisters. Now, the realization of this births an ongoing pursuit of us being our best version. So when we live into the fact that we're supposed to love ourselves, that lead us, beloved, to live as our best version, always growing, always becoming, but in the moment being the best version, bringing our best to the table. So at any given time, we are on a quest to, to be the highest, fullest, and truest versions of ourselves. That's what, that's what Luke 10, 27, encourages me, leads me, invites me to, to live as the highest, fullest, and truest version of myself. That's what we're doing. We're endeavoring to better our best. I'm just saying, we are endeavoring to better our best when we live out Luke 10, 27. So what that means is that when we are focused towards being our best selves, um, it means that we're not hiding, masking, and pretending. That's what we're not doing. When we're focused on, on being the fullest, truest, and highest versions of ourselves, we're not hiding, masking, and pretending. We don't live a life in that way, right? We might find ourselves dipping into that every now and then when we run into a fear experience, right? We might hide and pretend and morph and be chameleon-like, but we don't want to live there. We're working to, for to live as our truest, full, fullest, and highest self more often than not. So we're not hiding, 
masking and pretending as a way of life. We're not competing and comparing as a way of life, not comparing across the aisle way, across the street or across the oceans. We're not defending, deflecting and deceiving as a way of life when we're living out Luke 10, 27. So I'm always, I'm always gonna talk about Luke 10, 27 because that's the whole premise of all that it is that we do in this notion of self-love, loving ourselves well and first and intentional. Because we have, the, we, we have come to a place of self-acceptance, self this helps us and this allows us to be and to walk out. Some may say this is a utopia, hmm. self-love loving ourselves, not deceiving, not all of those kinds of things. Some may say it's a utopia. I say we all get to choose where we focus our energy. We all get to choose. Beloved, I choose to focus on love and the possibilities that become available with love as a primary way of living. I choose to focus there. Now, let me share a secret. Maybe not so much a secret. I don't know. What you focus on grows. So that's not really a secret, but I don't know. I don't know if we all really pay attention to that. What we focus on grows. When we focus in ways that lead us to hiding, masking, pretending, we get more of that. When we focus towards competing and comparing, we get more of that. When we And when we live um, in ways that are defending, deflecting, and deceiving, you know what I'm about to say. We inevitably get more of that. So let me, let's look at it from two, from two perspectives. From science, the third law of motion says for every action, there is an equal react, equal and opposite reaction. Now, let me put it in even plainer language. Do y'all remember the color purple? What Miss Seeley said to Mr. as she was getting in, in the car when he was, you know, hurling insults and threats at her and she did this. <laughs> Y'all remember she did this, something like this. Everything you done to me, already done to you. <laughs> in the plainness of language. Uh, but from a faith perspective, the Holy Scripture says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a person sows, this they shall, they will also reap. That's Proverbs 11 and 18. Now, you know, sometimes when I talk about love it, loving and serving and things like that, sometimes I think it, it, mm, so sometimes my motive will look like it's really about other people. And a lot of times it, it is. But a lot of times it's because I believe in this sowing and reaping, right? I want back good things, so I'm going to give out good things. I want love back, so I'm going to give love out, right? Okay. Now, for those of us who need a New Testament scripture, because we're like, that's the Old Testament. Y'all know we be that way sometime. I'm just saying. Galatians 6 and 7 says, a person reaps what they sow. So you got New Testament, Old Testament, and science. I'm just saying it's out there. You get to choose what you believe. That's the beauty about life and us being created as um, autonomous beings. We get to choose what we believe. Call a utopia if you want and believe a life of love isn't available for you. That is an option. It's just not an option I'm willing to accept for me and for those who I have the privilege to share. So I invite you, I invite you to call in, call in. Let's have this conversation. Do you believe it's a utopia? Do you believe that what I'm saying, this idea of loving yourself first and creating uh, a life of love in the world, do you believe that's a utopia like far-fetched? I like to hear your comments. For me, it's not, it's not, it's not an option to not live that life. So now for today's focus that was that was just the intro y'all that was the intro now for today's focus welcome to episode three of for the love of it welcome to episode three this episode was designed to be our first studio interview it was designed to be our first studio interview but you know it's been real interesting the, the development of this show has been very very interesting so there's some lessons that I've gotten since walking out this television show. After I got the call from um, 
So I got a call from Miss Priscilla Price, who was gonna be our guest today. She's gonna be our first in-person guest. So after I got the call from her, um, I began to wonder if I am being invited to pay attention to something. Am I being invited to pay attention to something? Because here's what I mean. The first show, which I believe had to be on my 60th birthday, March the 9th, the power was out in our, in our region and some equipment was out, so it couldn't be on my birthday. It was one week later when I turned 60, when I was 60 and eight days old, <laughs> one week later. So I, I had said that, yeah, uh, I had said that in the year previous that it would be on my birthday. That's what I was prepared for. The second show, I received what I thought was the message loud and clear. I had prepared the message. And then the night when I was, you know, putting, putting it to print, it was clear that that wasn't the message. And I was to do something different. And so we had last week's show, which basically explained my model of self-love, and it made more sense to do that, so that everything that I'm talking about is coming from this place of self-love. This is a model that Papa has given me to develop about around it. It made sense that last week's show would have explained that, right? But I had thought it was something else. Now, that brings us to this day. The last Friday of the month is planned for in-studio guests, in-studio interviews. And my guest is unavailable to make it today. She will be here. We will have her um, back on the schedule. She will be here. You're going to enjoy her. And so we will we'll have her here. Miss Priscilla Price will be here, you know, one of the Fridays. Um, so I begin to ponder, Catherine, what is the message? There, there are so many that I could lean towards the need to be flexible and adaptable. Okay. The fact that we are not in control. Anybody think they're in control? Uh, it's a, it's a, what, what do they say? It's an illusion. <laughs> the benefit of giving, the benefit of giving and extending grace, right? When things don't work out. The idea that the show must go on. All of those things could be something that I lean towards. However, I've landed at the thing, this thing right here that this is so much bigger than you, darling. Talking to myself, this is so much bigger than you. Don't be so wedded to your idea of things that your plans, your intentions, um, as you make, to make yourself unavailable for that which you could have never imagined. I need you guys, I need you all to hear this. Don't be so wedded to that which you've intended that you close off your imagination to that which you potentially never could have imagined because you were so determined to do it the way you thought it was supposed to be. If I am only available for what I previously imagined, I, I decide this is what I thought of, and so this is what it must be, then I eliminate all other potentials. I'm just saying, that's all I can get because that's where it ends with my imagination. I don't want what ends with my imagination because my imagination is limited. I mean, I can think of some wild things and some wonderful things, but I don't just want that, right? Conversely, when I am just, when I am simply just available, endless possibilities are available and realized. Endless possibilities. I choose to be available for the realization of endless possibilities. How about you? How about you? Are you so wedded to your ideas that you cannot receive or be available, be flexible and adaptable enough, right? And so, beloved, I invite you to be open to that which you hadn't planned, would never have imagined, and perhaps do not now want. The day of my birthday, I decided that the show must go on. So we did it from my dining room. I hadn't planned it from my dining room. I didn't want it from my dining room, but you better believe I'm grateful for the fact that social media exists. We were able to do it through social media. I am grateful for all the ladies that showed up. They were gonna be here sitting at the table and cheering me on in the sidelines, but they did it from my dining room. I'm grateful for a dining room. And I am just, I'm grateful that all of those things are available, even though it didn't go the way that I planned. So, and then even that, 
you know, we, we oftentimes are determined to have it our way. One question I have for you, did you create the universe? I'm just saying, did you create the universe? You know, there's a portion of scripture that says, where were you? When? I. Right? I know I didn't create the universe. Okay, enough said. So what do we do then about the interview? Um, each week morning, I host a Facebook Live show from 5.40 a.m. to 6. Often I ponder in real time on that show because my sisters and brothers are there. We just get to have <clears throat> a real good time. Yesterday, while discussing the, the change in the programming and pondering what to do, <clears throat> I, got, uh, I got an idea of a person very near and dear to my heart to invite. So I got online, I, you know, later on when it was, you know, a reasonable time in the morning, I texted them and invited them. And they, they said they would see if they could make it. They, they would try. They were hoping they could, but they wouldn't know until late last night. However, before I got the answer from them, I received an answer from Papa. Now, I could never have imagined this. I would never have done it. It just... It just isn't something I would have thought of doing. But let me tell you what Papa said to me. He said, oh, we have a caller. I'm, we hold up, suspend that we got a caller coming in. So let's see. Good morning. Good morning, caller. You're on the line. Hi, this is Devere Robinson, caller from Chicago today. Hey, Devere, yay. Thank you for calling from Chicago, Devere. Hey, listen, um, I really appreciated that uh, statement about the uh, being flexible. Yeah. With your guests and come on. Yeah. Because I tend to suffer from being a perfectionist. Mm. And I really go into a tendency when things don't go exactly as I planned it. Yeah. So I appreciated that. Yeah. So thank you so much for listening and thank you for calling in. Absolutely. Uh, we've got to be ad 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 adaptable because if we don't, we'll get locked into what has to be. And when we can't make it happen, then we're stuck. What else do we do, right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for calling. I appreciate you. Okay. I appreciate you too. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So that was so perfectly timed. I so appreciate the viewer from Chicago. Um, that was so perfectly timed in the sense of <clears throat> it gave us a little bit of, of a suspense in the sense of it, what do you think Papa told me to do? <clears throat> and what he basically told me to do, <clears throat> see if I can find myself. Uh, oh, he said, interview yourself. <laughs> what? But when, as soon as he said it, I was like, girl, that's, that's about something you would do, isn't it? He said, interview yourself. So that's the person who we're interviewing. So look, when you see me lean to the right, which looks like the left on the screen, that is, yes, that is, um, when you see me lean to the right, that's me being the interviewer. Thank you so much. When you see me lean to the left, which looks like the right on your screen, towards the E, that's me as the interviewee. <laughs> so... This is something Papa did. See, in my imagination, I would have never imagined to do this. I would have never thought of interviewing myself. But here we go. And so uh, he said, interview yourself. Now, this may seem strange to you, but not to me so much. I'm the kind of person who kind of moves to the beat of her own drum. I'm going to proceed as if I am interviewing someone else. When, of course, when I told you about the left and to the right. Another thing, I'm going to read my bio. Um, look, y'all. It's not totally updated because I didn't have time because I wasn't planning to interview me. I wasn't planning for me to be the interview. So let's have some fun while we do this. And I'm not going to do all parts of the interview because it wouldn't make any sense at all for me to do that. But here we go. We're going to read it. We're going to go through this pretty quickly. Dr. Catherine, e Dr. Catherine E. James is a champion for the advancement of humanity. Her efforts towards this goal are realized by a committed work with individuals and groups towards identification and fulfillment of their life's purpose, her, their life's potential. Her spiritual foundation, mental health background, passion for, and wholehearted belief in transformational self-love powerfully positions her for this task. 
Dr. James earned a bachelor's degree in family life education from Spring Arbor University, a master's degree in pastoral counseling from Ashland Theological Seminary, a, another master's in educational design, um, an educational degree, uh, master's of education design in instructional design from Western Governors University and a PhD in educational psychology from Walden University. She was privileged to serve academia through the vehicle of Wayne County Community College District for 36 years, from which she retired in 2019. As a Michigan State licensed professional counselor, she operates a private practice focused on training new counseling professions, professionals. She has been privileged to teach at Wayne County Community College District, Spring Arbor University, and Aston Theological Seminary, teaching in the counseling departments of the latter two. All total, she has taught in access of, I have 3,300 down here, but I think it's more than 500 courses since her teaching career began in 2002. Dr. James believes in serving humanity. Currently, she serves as a self-love transformational coach and freedom conductor, declaring to all that love is vital and freedom is our birthright. See, y'all know we got the book to that, right? Additionally, she serves as president of the Board of Michigan Mental Counselors Association, and as an associate pastor at Shiloh Deliverance Church International, where she has functioned in some variation of leadership for over 30 years. In 2016, she authored her first book, Self Love, A Gift You Give Yourself. Now y'all know we also, we also have the second book also authored. I don't have that one yet. Um, we'll, we'll get that. So right, I'm gonna give real time corrections or updates, right? She authored the first book, and uh, inviting mankind to deeper levels of self-love towards God, self, and others. She treasures healthy interpersonal relationships. Her more recent accomplishment included developing a transformational coaching consulting business with a personal development focus. She, she didn't change her mind on that a little bit, and she's doing some other things around that. That's an update. Um, launching her, she um, launched her Dr. Catherine E. James YouTube channel and host the weekly 540 that we talked about earlier. Most recently, she was named Counselor of the Year uh, by the American Mental Health Counselors Association. And in conclusion, personally, Dr. James has been wonderfully married for over 39 years now, almost, and is tremendously blessed to have a son and a daughter in love. She holds dear the reality of healthy intrapersonal relationships, intra and inter with herself and with others, with God, self and others. To that end, Dr. James is passionately involved in improving daily living experiences for those who, whom she is fortunate to serve. She treasures opportunities to walk with others towards an active pursuit and discovery of deeper and deeper reservoirs of transformational self-love. Now, that was a long, drawn out, and if I had given it to somebody else, I wouldn't have taken that long to do it. But in the next five minutes, let's just do a little bit of an interview. So we're gonna ask Dr. James some questions. Dr. James, <laughs> you state my life's intent is that every soul knows love and knows that they are loved. Describe for us your love for adding more love to the life of others. Hmm. I treasure adding love. I treasure helping others to love themselves because what I do know is everything is improved by more love, everything. We can't go wrong with love. And, and I serve in a lot of areas as a therapist, as a, um, as a mom, as, as a wife, and all of those kinds of things. And I serve in, in church. I um, serve in, in, in lots of ways. But in all of those ways, when love is absent, when the individual does not realize that they're valuable, they're important, that they're unique, and all those things, they suffer. We suffer when we lack love. So I do my part to make sure that humanity lives their best life by knowing that love is available for them. Okay, Dr. James, <laughs> Dr. James, will you share one of your most memorable experiences of adding more love into the life of others? All right, so I had the privilege right after 2020 to go out with some dear sisters of mine who we had, we, had, we had done life together and we hadn't been together in a long time. And we sat around the table and one by one, eventually they started sharing how my words have meant so much in their life and how I had poured into their lives. And I was in a business that was really challenging for me. And, and so I was having some doubts. 
and and I was looking for evidence of what it is that I do and how I show up. And and I sat there and I realized as they were pouring into me about how I had poured into them that they were my evidence. They were my evidence. All right. <clears throat> And so we're going to stop. So, so there's another question I would have, and that question would be, please discuss the challenges you have to overcome in order to add more love. I have to always work on myself. I have to always love me. I have to always pour into me. That's some of my challenges. So I want to make sure that I get into this. So that's, that's, that's the, so he, there was me interviewing me. I love Papa and how he, you know, allows us to show up as ourselves. All right. So as I conclude here, Beloved, you got to love yourself enough to show up as you. You got to love yourself enough to show up as you. And so Howard Thurman's poem says, the ideal situation for a man and woman to die is to have family members standing with them as they cross over. But imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed are the ghosts, are the ghosts and... Um, ideas and abilities, talents and gifts, the dreams given to you by your life that you, for whatever reason, never pursued those dreams. You never did anything with those ideas. You never used those talents. You never used those gifts. You never took advantage of those opportunities. And there they are standing around your deathbed, looking at you before you take your last dying breath, looking at you with angry eyes saying, we came to you and only you could have given us life. Beloved, dream your dreams, use your talents, Serve your gifts, live out your ideas. If not now, when? If not who? If not you? Only you can do what you've been birthed to do. I've come here to invite you to do what you can do. And so how do we help to do that? Remember our self-love mantra. I am an irreplaceable, unrepeatable, remarkable miracle with my own special brand of brilliance. And so as we, oh, we want to honor um, Athelia Cargile, who is the, the sponsor of this show. Thank you, Athelia, for sponsoring the show. And as we close, I want to remind all of us of Martin Luther King's quote, as he says, everybody can be great because everybody can serve. You don't have to co have a college degree to serve. You don't have to uh, make your subject and verb agree to serve. You don't have to know about Plato and Aristotle to serve. You don't have to know Einstein's theory of relativity to serve. You don't have to know the second theory of thermodynamics in physics to serve. You only need a heart full of grace and a soul generated by love, and you can be a servant. Beloved, this has been Dr. Catherine E. James serving you for the love of it at WHPR-TV Detroit, inviting you to live your life fully engrossed in love. Thank you for being with us today. You know what? Excellence is what you want. And excellence is what you get. How are you living? What are you giving? If excellence is what you see, then excellent is who you be. What are you pursuing? It's all up to you when when you come and make up in your mind that you want to be different.